going on, everybody? We back again for another episode of Coffee Talks, where I'm curating some of my favorite coffee roasters and leadership talks from some of my favorite people. And today, man, we're hitting a great, it's called Steady State Coffee. They're based out of Carlsbad, California. It's a cool little joint. This guy, the founder of it, loves coffee so much he started roasting in a shed behind his house before he ever opened up his first shop. Opened up a shop with some glass blowers. Really cool artisan craft to it. And this is a money, money Ethiopian. It's got like berry blueberry pie kind of vibes to it. So you're gonna get a lot of that pie taste. Get a little bit of the baking spices on the back end. Delicious coffee. And I love kind of like the way it says on the back, coffee with distinction. Cause you're getting a distinct taste with this coffee. Highly rated, highly recommended. And today we talking again, Dale Carnegie, how do you influence people and win friends? And today I want to talk to you about something I think is going to be really important. How do you have great conversations? How do you become a great conversationalist? Because here's the thing you need to understand. If you want to attract people to you, they got to want to actually talk to you. They want to actually have a conversation with you. And sometimes that's a really hard to do, especially in a day and age where we live behind our cell phones, where we live behind screens. So we don't actually understand how to have these beautiful, genuine conversations. Dale tells a story about how he was actually at a dinner party and he actually met a botanist there. And this botanist is actually highly renowned, scientific, and so Dale was very interested in this guy's field. So he's asking him questions. He's just listening to him talk about his field, his profession all night long. And so Dale leaves. And at the end of the night, this botanist goes up to the host and says, that was the most interesting conversationalist I've ever had a conversation with. And so the host tells Dale this later on. And Dale is com- you know, confused because he goes, I actually, all I did was listen. But he said, I listened intently. Because I actually was generally interested in his field and interested in this person. And because I listened genuinely and I had an intent listening to him, he thought I was great at conversations because there's no greater respect you can pay to someone than when you listen to them, when you actually connect with them, when you actually value what they're saying and you keep asking questions to continue that storyline. So you need to understand the beautiful art of that. And there's body posture that goes with that. There's a connection. Like, make eye contact with a person. Lean in. Put your phones down and actually talk to people and ask questions. Nothing is more disrespectful when you're having a conversation with someone and they keep looking at their phone or they got a smartwatch and they keep getting on that smartwatch. Because you know what they're saying? Other things are more important than you. So if you want to be great at conversations, you want to track people to you, You want to be a good listener. You need to be great at actually listening intently to people. This is great in business, wonderful in the work world, wonderful in the networking world, but you know what? It's also important in your home too. There's a story Dale talks about how a child comes up to his mom and goes, Mom, I know that you love me. She goes, I do love you. He goes, you know how I know you love me? She goes, how? He says, every time I come up to talk to you, you stop what you're doing and you look at me and you listen. Why? Because actions speak louder than words. There's this beautiful connection when we actually listen intently. Not only do we add value to people, not only do we honor people, but you know what? If you can listen intently, you can actually de-escalate conflict, de-escalate problems, and actually get to solving things and have a deeper, richer connection. There's a story in Dale's book where he talks about how a business owner had a client that had a small amount of money that was unpaid, an unpaid invoice. It was a small sum of money. And this was a client that they had for years. And so the accounting people, the billing people billed him and and he didn't pay. And so they kept sending letters. And finally he kept saying, I don't owe you any money. And he gets so angry, he comes all the way to Chicago where they were housed at. And he comes storming into the office of the CEO and he says, I've been ordering from this company for years and years. I've always paid my bills and I'm getting disrespected like this. And I can't believe you guys are charging me for something I haven't paid for. And he's very irate. And he says, easily a CEO has the right to sit and show them the invoice. No, you owe me this or or start getting defensive and start. No, but he says, you know what? I'm so glad you brought this attention, this to my attention 
Because you know what? If you've been treated unfairly, we might have other clients that are getting treated unfairly. And I need to get to the bottom of this. And I'm sorry you felt that way. And you know what? We're going to make this right. And he says immediately the man was expecting a fight. But what was happening was the CEO was listening to him, understanding where he was coming from. And he was actually responding to what the guy was saying. The guy was very offended. Afterwards, he remembered that this gentleman, every time he came to town, they would go to, out to eat and they'd have lunch. So he says, you know what? How about I take you out to lunch, our favorite place on me? And they go out to lunch. And when they came back, that client actually put the largest order he's ever put into that organization. Largest order. Because he was listened to. When he goes home, he actually, about a couple weeks later, sends an apology letter. And says, you know what? I had my assistant go through and clean up my desk and clean up. And I found that invoice that we owed hidden in a pile of papers. And he wrote a check to reimburse it. Why? Because the CEO decided to listen intently to what was going on. It's easy to talk. It's easy to respond. There's something powerful about listening and being concerned with what the other person is saying. If you want to be interesting, learn to be interested in someone else. If you can learn that art, people go and keep talking to you. There ain't nothing we love more than to hear ourselves speak. I talked about this before, about how leaders, high capacity people love to talk. And when you can ask a lot of questions and be interested in them and their journey and their accomplishments and what they're interested in, guess what? They want to keep having a conversation with you and they're going to invite you to have a conversation again. You got to learn to be interested in someone else and watch yourself grow. That is the way to get to the heart of every person is to treasure what they treasure. And so I'm going to end with this story with Dale to teach you how to be a great conversationalist. Dale talks about how there was a gentleman at another dental party. This gentleman loved boating. And so Dale decided, you know what, I'm going to lean in and just be interested in this boating experience. I was enthusiastic about what he was enthusiastic about, and I genuinely wanted to learn more. I was so honored about this conversation. I was honoring him with the conversation. And afterwards, Dale leaves the party. And again, this gentleman goes up to the host and says, man, I love that you had an avid boater enthusiast like me here. I had a great conversation. And the person responded, well, he actually doesn't really boat or doesn't really care about it, but he was very engaged in your conversation. He goes, well, why would he keep talking to me all night about boats if that's not something he's interested in? And this was the response, because he's a gentleman. He saw you were interested in boats and he talked about the things he knew would interest and please you. He made himself agreeable. Come on, can we be ladies? Can we be gentlemen? Can we learn the art of being interested from a genuine perspective? We truly want to connect with people. But if you can do that, I'm going to tell you right now, you will be memorable. You will attract people to you and you'll have people want to continue to have conversations with you. All right, guys, till next time, I hope you were blessed by this coffee talk. We're going to keep growing and we're going to keep influencing people for positive, building friendships for the positive, and we're going to drink some good coffee along the way. Till next time, pray God's peace. <laughs>